they don't receive it. God wants us to be at a place. Hallelujah. Romans 15. Verses 18 and 19. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient. In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to, I hope I say this correct, Illyricum, boy, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Okay. Notice how he says, I dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me. Christ has not accomplished through me. What he is going to speak about is what he has accomplished through Christ Jesus. Amen. So that basically tells me we don't, we don't, we're not going to go sharing things that we shouldn't. We should be sharing the word of God and all the things that, that Christ has accomplished. Amen. Because sometimes when we start to share negativity and stuff that hasn't been accomplished, then it turns people away. Amen. First Corinthians 2. Verse 4 and 5. It says here, And my speech and my preaching were not with per persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. <coughs> Amen. And I'm going to look at first, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And it goes on to say that if those rulers knew exactly what they were supposed to do, they would have never crucified Christ. But it says, we don't preach with persuasive words of men. And that's why when we pray, when we come and we, we share the word, it is so important that we just allow the Holy Spirit to take lead because it should never come from us. It should never come from man. And we're not trying to persuade anyone. The Bible is the truth. We speak the truth of the word. And we allow the Spirit and his power to take rule and reign. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God is not even for debate. The word is the word. So no matter what we feel or what we think about something, what does the word say about it? You know, sometimes we're so passionate about our belief and our opinion. But if it goes against the word, then your opinion means nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. John 14. Sixteen to eighteen. Says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. This is Jesus telling them that the helper will be with them forever, that forever is here with us, amen? The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Thank you, Lord. Amen? We have the spirit of truth with us. We have him indwelling within us, and that's why we seek after 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that that power can come upon us so that we can stand boldly and do the work that God has called us to do. And we're not going to be moved by what we see happening in the world. Amen. In John 16, 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Hallelujah. Who does he hear from? He hears from his almighty father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, have you ever said, I don't know how I would live in this life without God? It's really true. And the helper that we have, this amazing supernatural helper, we got to tap into him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's take a look at Acts 2, verse 4. The Holy Spirit gives us utterance and declarations of praise. And Acts 2, 4 says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And this is this amazing chapter where it describes when the 120, the day of Pentecost, right? Can you imagine being in that place? Hallelujah. We don't even have to imagine. We can tap into the Holy Spirit right here, right now. Amen. Verse 17. Let's look at um, chapter 10, verse 44 to 46. It says, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Amen. Amen. And he was talking, I mean, just, just above that, he was telling about how Jesus was anointed and all that. Okay. And it says, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. What a great day for us. Amen. Praise God for that day that the Gentiles could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Oh, hallelujah. So those who didn't believe, and we might face that today, if people who don't believe hear us speaking in tongues, they may, I don't know if astonished would be the right word. I'm, I don't know. But they wouldn't understand what is happening. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please remember that God desires for us to be the most powerful that we can be. And we are, the church is the most powerful entity in this world. But we have to do our part, and we have to get to that place. Amen. When we see all the things that are happening, and, and we see the, the crux and the, the, where it's coming from, it's coming from people that need to take care of us. And they are being influenced by an evil, evil entity. Satan himself, he does not 
loved this country because he knows that this country was birthed by God. Amen. What a wonderful day it was. Yesterday, was it yesterday that the decision was made by the Supreme Court? Friday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that. But now we need to pray for our state. We need to pray that our state, the, the people in, in leadership, make the right decisions. Amen. And we can pray in the spirit. If you don't know what to pray, pray in the spirit. The Holy Spirit will, will help you with that. Amen. Romans 8, 26. And it says right here. Likewise, the spirit. The Spirit also helps in our weakness. Weaknesses. Amen. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will, will pray. Help us to pray. And I thought about all the things that God has brought me through. You know, we live life and then we tend to forget about, about events in our life. But <clears throat> one of the events that my husband and I had gone through was um, when, we, when we were pregnant. Yeah, we both pregnant. Kavika, you. <laughs> we are pregnant. Anyway, um, Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but when we were pregnant with the twins, who are now how old? 36. Oh, 36. <laughs> Time sure does fly. But we were young, and we were not so smart back then, I think. You know? I mean, in the ways of the Lord, you know? I was, I was going to church. I was um, uh, raising my kids in the church. But I was, we were pregnant. We didn't know we were having twins. And um, I got really, uh, I got sick. I had this thing called hyperthyroidism. And so I didn't even know I was expecting at the time because Jonathan was little. Very little, Okay. And then um, went to the doctor, and oh, you're expecting. I was 94 pounds. I'm carrying a whole other person. You guys know that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but okay, just thinking about God and how He, when we don't know what to do, He takes care of it. Amen? Yeah. Believe it or not. Um, the, the doctors told us that I, was, I would have to take the, these medications that are going to deform my baby. So I had to, <laughs> so they told us, and I'm, I'm like looking at them in a blank stare because what are you saying? So they gave us one week to decide to get an abortion. Thank God we were young, but thank God that God had his hand on us, even if we didn't know it back then, because God takes you where you at, okay? God takes you where you at, and then we have to build ourselves up, okay? But anyway, going back to that, one week we're like praying, but we don't know if we're praying the way we should be praying, I know I was praying, and we got to make a decision. And I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. God, I, I praise and thank God that I knew enough that if God 
blesses us with this child that it's, everything's going to be okay. I have to trust that. Okay. And so we go back to the doctor. They, we tell them our answer and praise God. Um, we do another test, and then we find out we're having twins. So double blessing. Amen. And this is why I know. The word says if you, you train up your children, you know, not all of my children come to church. But I know that one day soon they're coming. Because the word says my household is saved. Amen. I know they're saved. They were brought up knowing God. But I, as a mom, I want to see them here. I want to see them serving God to the fullest. Because they are going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the result. You know, Lama's here. Praise God. Lias is coming. And so are the rest. You know, but we have to. I've, I've realized that as a mom, I can speak all I want. I can speak till I'm blue in the face. I need to let God help me with this. So how am I going to do that? And in studying this, I know I can go to the Father. I can pray in tongues. I can just speak with him. And he will reveal to me those hidden truths. And he will help me. Amen? So whether you, wherever you are at this point in your life, in your spiritual walk, if you are not seeking God and asking him to help you with that discipline, make that time. Make that time to, to speak to him in your heavenly language. You may not know who you're praying for. You may be praying for someone who is in danger at that point in time. You may be praying for yourself, you know, you may be praying for your children. There's so many things that we have to do in our walk with God that is going to bring us closer to him. And praying in tongues is one of the most important. And if you don't have that yet, all you got to do is ask. You got to ask the Lord and then just speak. Amen. He wants us to be able to. He wants us to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, with fire and with power. He wants that for us. And when we can build ourselves up, can you imagine all of us being built up with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we come together? Man, no evil entity can, can even touch us. Amen? And we're going to have to be that 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 vigilant about it. Amen. Jude, Jude 20 and 21. It says. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen? Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Amen? Doesn't everything about God deal with faith? Amen? And when we're praying... You think about, you also declare Mark eleven twenty two to 24. You already believe before you receive. Even if you don't know what you're praying, you will never pray, to the whole, pray in tongues and pray something bad. Because when you are communicating with God, it's always good. Amen. 
It will never be something that will harm you or any of your family or anybody else. It will always be something good. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, what does the Holy Spirit do? Right? He instructs us. He comforts us. He is known as the comforter. He advocates for us. Amen. He counsels us. Do we receive it? When we need wisdom, we pray and we receive wisdom. We can be at peace and we can be at rest when we seek God through speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost. He's our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He teaches us. He shows us what to do. And he takes us out of the pit when we're there. But we have to initiate it. Amen. Speaking and praying in tongues should be a flowing stream in the life of a believer. Do not let that dry up. We cannot strive in this day and age without the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we have to desire to be baptized with that fire. And you know with that fire, you know like um, I was, we were singing that song but the piano went off a little bit. When it says, um, what are the words? When it says, your feet just have to dance. We got to be free. We got to be free to, to worship God. And even when songs are being sung, we can sing in the Holy Spirit. That will help you be free. Amen. Hallelujah. So as believers, we should all shape and frame our lives around our God schedule. Okay, because after all, we are spirit. We don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. Okay. We have a soul and we live in a body. So here's our God schedule. Uh, framing our lives around it. Number one, the word is number one. And it's our final authority. That's where we run to when we need to know something. Number two, we should live by faith. Number three, we should walk in love. Number four, we need to allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? We start speaking in tongues on a daily basis. Amen. And number five, we pray without ceasing. Amen. So I pray, my prayer for you today is that we, ju we do just that. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit at this point in time just ask ask amen he's right there okay father I just thank you Lord for this word I thank you father God for your Holy Spirit's leading and guidance in every one of our lives and I just thank you father that we will have this desire Lord Have this desire, Father, to just run after you and take all that we can, Father God, because you have it all for us. You have it all there for us. All we need to do is reach out and grab hold. And I just thank you, Lord, for the supernatural life that you have created for us. Let us all, Father, just tap into that. And I just thank you for each and every one of my brothers and sisters are empowered, Lord, Empowered by you, Father, through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. Am I on? Thank you. I'm just trying to uh, test this new uh, lapel. Praise the Lord. Um, to, today's word are caring to um, what is not only important, but it is essential very essential to do with all what we have to do in all our, our thinking, our praying and everything. And I think what's most important of, of all is that God is preparing us into the next life with the Comforter, with the Holy Ghost who will be in us eternally to help us to be before the final stage where we become just like his son Jesus Christ that's what it is knowing who we are in Christ Jesus but let's uh, pray right now and uh, can can someone call the chosen church in please Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, for this period and time, we pray, Father, that the people grab hold of who they really are and of the position that you have placed the body of Christ in this earth to do thy will thy perfect will before Jesus come back for us, the body, the bride of him. Father, we thank you that this is the time where we have the opportunity to take part in the greatest revival in the, before, in the world, Father so that people can come into your kingdom in innumerable amount that cannot be counted as a sand in the sea, Father, in the shores all over the world, Father. Come into your kin kingdom. In, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is the scripture that God gave me and I think it's key that in Proverbs 29, it says in the second verse, it says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. This is what happened in this earth right now, that the church has been shaken to be awakened to take authority. We cannot blame anybody but the church with that authority, okay? But however, to our prayers and supplication, be led by the Spirit of God, that things are changing already. It's going to change. What's going to change? The bear of, of, of the authority that we're taking rule. Amen? So this is a simple prayer. And then we go from there. It's not going to be long. But she, she used a key word in today's message. And that was the, the desire. You need to have that desire. You can come to church all these years. You can come to 
church knowing that you were brought up in church. But if you don't have the desire, how can you operate in the greatness that God has for you? He gave you authority. And that authority is backed by his power. The power of the Holy Ghost. That's why we need the word. And that's why we need the spirit of God. Amen. We need the spirit of God. Without him, we're hopeless. Without him, we can do nothing. But praise God that we've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And we've been designed more of the change. So again, what is a perfect position of the church now? Proverbs 29, 2 again. When the righteous are in authority. Are you in authority? Yes. The people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So already we know that in the United States of America and even in the nation of Israel and in the body of Christ, righteousness are taking its rightful place right now. And you're going to see it happen from this year to next year to the rest of the year until Jesus come back for you and I. Hallelujah. Greatest spiritual awakening. And this is what's going to happen also in Kawu. Now, the 4th of July parade is led by the Spirit of God. I'm going to tell you that. That's why we're getting ready. Uh, I know we'll be on vacation this coming uh, week, uh, uh, whole week next week, but we'll be here Friday to uh, decorate the float. I think we're having two floats, huh? Two trailers, huh? And before we leave today, we're going to pray that all the equipment and the flowers that needed, you know, that do any of you folks know where these other signs where we have the Jesus is the healer and everything? It's supposed to be in one. I, I think Pastor Stanley should know where it is. Oh, you have it in the back in the in the where? In the chosen church? You seen them? Yeah, we need that also for the, the flow. Because our, uh, we prayed uh, uh, for scriptures just the best that we could have for the time being. But we're going to make our own scripture later on, which God is making it simple and not rule. So you got to read so much. Just simple. But anyway, the one that we have is not that simple, but we're going to highlight the place where if thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart, you know, that thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and salvation, you know, and with the mouth, your salvation is already sealed, you know. So praise God, we, we're going to have, have, have that, but uh, Han, bring all this. Be there. Friday we're going to be uh, working on this, but on our vacation we'll be working on it in Kohala uh, of this, and and we have an opening in here, how to be saved, but it's kind of wordy in here, so we're going to put Daiwa Minishikabu. 
and you can show where her office is and the phone number. Already, she's uh, uh, making all that, uh, what you call that, the label, to put it in here, because we don't have just a stamp, you know, of, of that. And, and, and uh, she's doing that already. And Friday night, we can do that too, with, with your folks' help, and we're going to pray over these scriptures. We're going to pray over this track. Why? Because God says, this is part of the revival anointing for Kawu. Hallelujah. It is so key. And Friday and on Saturday already we have the paper that you signed. If you have been signed, uh, uh, that's all right. I think you can still come and, and march with us because we have enough. We have enough signature huh, on that. And, and, and she talked to me again. Uh, yes. Friday, Deborah McIntosh was in charge of this. And she's, a, she's excited. So, praise God. Are, are we ready to pray? Okay. Father, we thank you that you've given us your authority and it's backed up by your power the power of, crea of us creating things. Just like in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created this. God created light and light shining in darkness. And Father, it came down to verse 26 where you created man in your image and in your likeness. And that's where we are, Father. That Jesus has to become man so that we, as humanity, can become like you. And that's how we are when we got born again by the Word of God, the incorruptible Word of God. And Father, we thank you that this church right here, these members right here, would have the desire to be led by the Spirit, speaking in tongues, Lord. And Father, we pray right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that Kau will be changed dramatically from this day forward in the prayer that it's been settled in the spiritual realm. It's been created in the spiritual realm by our prayers of, and supplication. And uh, Father, we know already with that petition that has gone up. And this would be the greatest beginning from this coming Saturday when we hand out this flyer and we will bless the people. And Father, that it is your anointing that you have given us the Holy Ghost. It is your glory that you have given us. It's the Holy Ghost. And he is abiding in us forever so that we can never fail again. That we will always be a part of the Godhead bodily. All through your word, the teaching has gone on. <coughs> we thank you, Father, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us from this Saturday to the prayer <coughs> and to the scriptures that we'll be handing out in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> so we're going to have just a short meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. A short meeting.
in charge of decorating the floor. Did you guys discuss that? <coughs> Are you Lama? <coughs> okay, let's settle it. Lama and Rachel. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> but before we go, do you know Thank you, Lord. Oh, this thing is short. Now, let's, let's pray for if there's anyone online. We see God moves people, whether they know it or not, and they just pop up online. You know? It just, it just didn't pop up because God had designed a person for salvation. Amen? <clears throat> so if you are online and you don't know why you are online. God sent you there to receive salvation. Because either you're going to be saved or you're not going to be saved in the end time. Simple as that. So the scripture says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what confession is that? Call it upon the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So let's just say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's how we do it, by the confession. That's the confession we're talking about. We're not conf saying for you to confess your sins because already if you receive Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior, your sins are forgiven. From the east to the west, it's totally wiped out. You cannot remember all the sins you did. I couldn't remember all the sins I did. I'm sure you folks don't remember all the sins you did. But it's forgiven just by receiving Jesus Christ. So can we say that? Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Help me in this life. Send me to the right church that I can continue to grow in you, Jesus. Now I receive it and I thank you for it. For I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. All glory and honor unto the Father. Amen. Amen. Salvation is that simple. Didn't make it hard. Just got to believe in the heart. Now, I want for um, one thing. Fred, come up. And Bernie, come up. I'm going to anoint you folks with this oil, okay? Why am I anointing you folks with this oil? Now, again, only Jesus in Luke 4, 18, 19, only Jesus started this power. And he gave in his power of authority to you and I. And that power... And that is back in what I'm going to say is that I'm not going to pray for your healing. It's done. 
it, it, it's already done. Does, you look at Mark. It doesn't say that we're going to pray for the healing. But it says that we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Because it's done over 2,000 years ago. It's been backed up by the power of Jesus. So, uh, so we as a church are waiting for the church to be built. The new building. And so these people are key and very important. Okay? Praise the Lord. So we're not going to pray for your healing. We're going to pray that you receive what Jesus has already done for both of you. Amen. So Father, we anoint them with the oil. We lay hands. We don't pray for their healing. They are already healed, Lord. And in Jesus' name, Father, in that name and the power behind the authority he has given us, that power, Father, in Jesus' name, in that name, they receive it. Say, I receive, I receive what Jesus has done for me and for my whole being, for my spirit, soul, and body. I am made whole. Amen. You believe that? Yes. Amen. And you are going to be walking in tremendous ability. Amen. Amen. God love you Thank and you. we love you. And before we go to the next phase, can we have the praise and worship team? We, we're going to celebrate a birthday. Okay? God put it in my heart. Yeah, hon. Can somebody get those things ready that is necessary? Thank you. I know it myself too. Amen. I receive all the fullness of God and be made whole. <laughs> and if you, Pastor Stanley, are watching, you are already to the word of God that was spoken. Just as God created heaven and earth in the beginning, you were created to serve his church in power and authority. And we need to grab hold. Amen? So can we call up Riley? man of God. You're going to see him change to the glory of God as a man of God in this church of his faithfulness and commitment to this church because of God. Amen. We love you, Riley. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and you have something from my wife too. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Okay, let's raise up for one song.
close, I want to just uh, welcome. Before she close in <laughs> prayer. <laughs> uh, before she close, you know the message today? When you sing in the praise and worship, and singing in the spirit of exactly what you guys are singing in the, in the natural. I sing in the spirit because why? Because I pray every single day in the Holy Ghost. And I, so that's all I wanted to mention. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. I just wanted to welcome a couple of people. Um, Nikki in the back, she is Auntie Donna's niece. Thank you guys. And there's Hezzy and Skylar and Kingsley and the baby. So thank you guys for coming. And also Uncle Wade and Auntie Terry's brother. Uncle Glenn. Thank you, Uncle. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father God. Lord, we thank you for that message that we received this morning, Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit anointing upon us in everything that we do, Father God. We pray your blessings upon each and every person who is here, Lord. And Father, we thank you for blessing them in abundance in every area in their lives, Father. So, Father, we thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.